Hello everybody and welcome to my third tea video. Um, I recently put out a video where I did a um, unpacking of post and uh, I unpacked all of the things that I've been naughtily ordering online. And one of the boxes was a box of tea from a company called Tea Pigs. And um, while, <coughs> excuse me, while searching um, different websites and things for different teas and different companies to kind of use, I thought that Tea Pigs had a great um, website. And simply because they had, not only do they have like different teas, but they also have little sample boxes which are um, tiny and contain two tea bags. Um, which is perfect for what I want to do because you know if I buy a large sachet of tea or a hundred tea bags of the certainty and don't like it, it's a waste. And so these come in really cute little packages, as you can see, and inside each one there are two tea bags, an absolutely stunning um, little tea bags. They're really sort of silky and, and lovely actually. There we go. Um, so, as always, what I wanted to do was sort of show you how easily the tea diffuses. So what does it say about the tea? So basically this is Mao Feng green tea. Um, and the tea bags, they're called tea temples. Obviously made by them. So this is pure Mao Feng green tea. What's special about this tea? If you enjoy the health benefits of green tea but hate the taste, this is perfect for you. It has a delicate natural flavour of summer air, peaches and apricots, and unlike most murky brown standard green teas, this one turns a clear pale green when infused. Which we can sort of start to see now. We use the whole leaf only, not the dust found in regular tea bags. Whole leaf is best. <clears throat> we discussed that previously in one of the other tea videos about how they have three different grades of tea leaves. They've got the um, the large ones which they use in loose tea, and they've got like the middly ones which you find in most tea bags, and then you've got like all the tiny bits, and they're usually what's found in those sort of paper tea bags. Um, a tea worthy of worship belongs in a biodegradable tea temple. Our spacious, silky, transparent purse, allowing maximum room for perfect infusion. It's true, there is a lot of room in there. And all the leaves are unfurling. It's beautiful. I do love green tea. I don't know. The smell of it reminds me of um, when I went to China. Well, I went to Hong Kong actually, and then took the train across to I think it's 
called Sheng Pan. I can't remember. I didn't really like it there. It was horrible, but they had these amazing tea shops. And um, in the tea shops, there was all kinds of obviously teas, and they did different things. And you had all the the teas for health and um, beauty. You had teas for your hair, tea for your nails. Um, you know, teas that symbolise different things, fertility, like sort of um, ritual teas. And it was lovely to sit in there and sit down and <clears throat> they sit you down. And I'm pretty sure I've shown you in a previous video um, when I was living at my old house. I had behind me that large dresser behind with all my tea stuff in it. That I had all sort of Japanese teapots and things like that and they have tiny little cups about that big and that's how big they drink their tea around it. Not big mugs like us. And, um, and you'd sit there and you'd sort of tell them if you, you know, sort of, if you were tired, fatigued, um, you'd tell the lady in the shop what was wrong with you, um, or what you were wanting. So if it was that you wanted a baby, or, um, wanted, you know, prosperity, things like that, um, then they'd kind of come up with a selection of teas, or even a blend, you know, sort of like bespoke, I would say, um, blender. And uh, you'd sit there and you'd try them, and they were so and it was amazing. They were so cheap and lovely and delicious. Um, and I really miss that. I think I'd really like to go again. I don't think China was really the country for me, um, for the simple reason that it sounds terrible, but no one spoke English, and I'm very um, conscientious of every country that I go to. You know, I always try and pick up a few words and. I can speak French and I speak a little bit of Italian. Um, when I go to Spain, I try and pick up a bit of Spanish. Uh, things like that. Um, just to be courteous. But, you know, luckily having English as a mother tongue and also French, because there's a lot of people that don't speak English but can speak French around the world. Um, I always manage to get by everywhere, but this is the first place I'd ever been to in the whole entire world where I couldn't get them to understand I needed to get back to the train station and my travelling partner and I were completely lost and um, we hadn't even gone far but we kind of just figured that people would know we didn't realise no one would be able to converse with us especially being so close to Hong Kong and because I'm blonde and I've got very pale skin and blue eyes <clears throat> a lot of people hadn't seen that before or if they had they, it was uh, something they hadn't really seen or often at least, and people would be pulling their families out of shops um, to, to stare at me. And it became quite unnerving, I don't know, they would never have done anything to harm me or anything, but to be stared at and to, um, to feel like a complete outsider, I felt like an alien. I mean, I, you know, to have a whole city of people looking at you in awe, like, what is that? Um, <laughs> and then not to be able to converse at all, you know, it was really difficult. So we ended up finding, finding this mall we sat outside the mall for, um, for, I think it was about an hour waiting for someone white to come out, someone Caucasian, um, just so that they might speak English. We found someone and he was, I mean, everyone that was there was, it was just fluent Chinese, nothing. But he managed to get us into a taxi and ask the taxi driver to take us back to the train station, which was very nice of him. Because I don't know how we'd have got home otherwise. Um, but I think that was a specific part, and one of my friends is a DJ, and he travels the world extensively, so he gigs and things like that. And he was in China, he was in Beijing not long, and he's like, I love it here, you know, it's amazing, I think it's brilliant. And I said, well, I didn't like it, and, he's like, and he asked me where I went, and I told him, and he said, well, it's horrible there, so there's no wonder. He's like, even I hated this. Bottom hole of the world, although he didn't say it, quite nice vocabulary. Um, so I think I would like to go back. I definitely want to visit the Great Wall of China and I'm very experimental with food and stuff. Although he ate, um, he ate chicken's feet, which oh, I don't know if I could do, in all honesty. So 
it's cloudy at the bottom and clear at the top. And it's kind of letting off a bit of an oily residue, to be honest, from what I can see. And there's also a lot of little fibres in the tea. Um, and the actual glass sort of comes through the bag. Hmm. Let's see how this one in here is doing. Just to steep for three minutes. I'm not entirely sure how long I was talking for then. It does smell very um clean. It smells very clean. Um, not chemically at all. It's kind of it smells like cut grass. I don't know if you noticed my other chicken mug. I have a thing about chickens. I'm sure most of you know. Yeah, it smells um very gardeny, I think, but very, very delicate, very subtle, which is true of what the box says, actually, because most teas, um, most green teas come very strong and very bitter, especially when over brewed, and they do go very dark, sort of a dark brown colour, and this one has stayed green, and if I taste it. definitely still that green tea taste there. It is a lot more delicate. I would also say it was quite sweet at the end. Um, it is a lot more delicate but I'd still say it quite strongly tastes of green tea. But it's right, natural. I don't peaches and apricots. That's overstretching it's not a wine. I don't have a sommelier's palette, however, um, I don't get peaches and apricots at all. Maybe this one could have been brewing longer. No, no, just tastes like green tea. But nice though, nice green tea. Um, not strong and offensive and bitter. No, it's nice. I wouldn't say it's the best green tea I've ever had. It's a yummy one. Um, so that's all I really have to say in this video about this tea, to be honest. It's not a very exciting one. Um, but yeah, if you like green tea and you don't like the overly strong ones, then this is definitely one for you. And uh, that's it. So <clears throat> next tea video um, we're going to do is matcha tea. I'm really excited about this. Um, video, so tune in next time and find out a bit more about that one. See you later.